Yeah, and it's like you you have two modes. You have you have mode one where it's like um, you're at zero percent. You push. You block. You lob, and it's very very safe. And then you have mode two. Where, excuse my dog in the back, and where you're at like 700%, and it's just, you're seeing red, and it's kill everything. And we need, we need mode 1.5, where it's 80%, when you loop, it's controlled aggression. When you block, it's just on the back end, and you're still going for it on the forehand. We, we need kind of like an in-between, instead of these two extremes. It's Louie Louie here and welcome to another VOD review. I apologize for the delay in my upload. I had a very, very hectic end to February, so I had to take a little hiatus from making videos, but we are back. I should be back to a relatively normal upload schedule as well. I'm going to try to upload once per week, maybe twice per week on Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, but first of all, same announcement as last time. Firstly, Daniel Bartol. Um, I sent you a message on Discord. I still have a couple questions before I review your VOD. Robert, your VOD is also still not working. I see this untitled spreadsheet, and then when I go to up open this file, um, it just says access denied. So because of that, today we're going to be looking at Trip, who actually, um, I think swapped matches. And just for everyone's reference, if you make a submission, and for whatever reason, it takes me a little bit to get to it, and you have a more recent match that you'd like to swap it to, then definitely feel free to go ahead and change it to a different video. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look. Just make sure the video is good. Awesome. Okay, so let's do some reading here. We have Dignix 09C on the forehand, Dignix 05 on the backhand, Super Viscaria ALC. Um, it's a very, very standard setup. USATT league rating 1761. Um, so we again have a pretty advanced player here. End goal is 2000. I've only started this great sport about eight months ago and have caught on to it very quick, working on attacking and looping topspin as well as controlling my opponent. Um, from eight months, already being 1500, um, about 1800 playing level, very, very good improvement. When I first started, I went from about zero to 1800 in about 10 months so this is really really good um good speed of improvement for sure for practice every day for about an hour on the ball machine and one to two hours of playing people and then rated match so this is you against cole rothelsberger i apologize if i pronounced that wrong in the cttc february flash tournament back and forth game but i won in five after going down zero two Alrighty, um, let's go ahead and take a look. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. I've watched the first couple of points or so, um, but I haven't really watched too far just to kind of get a feel. Uh, so for the viewers at home, our protagonist is on the far side of the table. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and start and, and see what we got. All right, so right off the bat, you seem very comfortable not attacking. And I believe, yeah, let me just go back. So you said, right now working on attacking and looping topspin as well as controlling my opponent. And if we look at these first two points, you're extremely passive after the serve when he's playing right into your real top. So good serve, very weak return. And this is right in your wheelhouse on the forehand. But then for some reason, you decide to block. And, and my guess would be you're used to playing somewhat weaker opponents that let you get away with blocking. So you block this ball, and they normally also play a very weak shot. Maybe they let you play away from the table or lob or kind of just play relaxed. And so you're not getting punished for it, which works up to between 16 and 1800. You can get away with it. 
But if you're trying to take that next step and get to 2000, this absolutely cannot happen. Um, and the worst part about it is it happens two points in a row. So this is the first point of the match. Uh, maybe you weren't 100% sure how he was going to serve, so it catches you by surprise. But the second point, you do the exact same serve, he gives you the exact same return, and you still block. And it also looks like you're kind of rushing. So I'd say take three seconds before you serve, just to stop and think about exactly what you want to do. Yeah, a little bit of a weak return as well, just in terms of the placement. Um, it's first game, so I'm not too worried about it just yet, but we'll see if there's any patterns that happen. That's a very good return right there. That's good as well. Um, ideally, I mean, like in a perfect world, the loop is a little bit deeper and spinnier, but it's a good start for sure. It's not bad. And it's good that you're going for it. Yeah, a lot of pushing. So same thing there. Um, very good serve. Very good serve, other than the, the crazy leg action, but the spin is good. Um, and then you're pushing a long ball to your forehand. And this shot has to stop. It works against lower rated players because you can probably push and they'll push and you'll push and they'll push. And you wait for the absolute perfect miracle ball that comes right here to your forehand for you to loop. But against higher level players, you're never going to get that ball. So this has to be good enough. It's a push and it's long and it's to your forehand. So that should be like check mark, good to go, loop that ball. Maybe you're going to miss it because you're not used to playing in a match. But and, and maybe you lose to someone 200 points below you because you try to loop and you miss it. But you have to be willing to lose and teach yourself to stay calm and loop these types of balls in a tournament instead of playing the safer shot. Because yes, this will get you to maybe 1800 best case scenario, but you're never going to be able to get to 2000 playing like that. Another, this is a really minor thing, but your wrist is slightly, slightly too high. Um, so you should be lowering, lo lower your wrist a little bit on the forehand. And I can't see it from here perfectly. Um, I'll see it better when you're on the other side. But let's say this is your rubber. Excuse my terrible drawing. You know how you have like the words on the bottom of the rubber? Your index finger should always be here. And I have a suspicion that sometimes on your forehand, your index finger looks more like this, where it's coming up the paddle. This is really bad. Um, we want to make sure that it's always horizontal on the rubber like this, because otherwise you'll end up hitting across the ball and you end up losing spin and power, which of course you don't want. Yeah, that's really passive as well. Um, the serve return is all right. That'll just get better with experience. But that's a very weak loop to your forehand. And because you're not getting punished, you're really comfortable going away and lobbing. You almost recover, but, but still. That's good. That's bad. Hopefully you see the pattern there. That's fine. Not ideal. But then that long push to the forehand. Yes, it's a tournament. You, you want to keep the ball on the table. But you have to loop that ball. And it's something I like to call controlled aggression. Because I know you said you want to control your opponent as well. Um, loop does not necessarily mean 500% power, like kill the ball, go crazy. A loop can be 85% power and it can be controlled aggression, but it just gives you initiative. And it keeps you kind of in control of what your opponent's doing instead of pushing and being at the mercy of whether or not he misses. And the way I look at it, I would rather lose because of my mistakes than lose because my opponent played well. If I lose because my opponent played well, it's like, what can I do? I've, I pushed and I got unlucky because he landed his shots or I won because he missed his shots. I'd rather say I won because I landed my shots or I lost because I missed my shots. Um, that's just kind of my take on it. That is a horrible serve. <laughs> um, we we got to work on that. Which... Um, there's no right or wrong way. There's five trillion different ways to serve, but just make sure you're 
focusing on your serves as much as you're focusing on everything else. That's much better. That, that one was really good. I already have my notes for you, I think. Now, I know you said you lost the first two games, so... I might skip straight to the third game, just so I can see if I can find you playing well. Uh, let me check your finger, actually. Right there. Um, it's not every time. Let me see if I can pause it on the frame. Right there. It's it's super hard to see, but your wrist pops up a lot on your forehand. Um, your paddle should be horizontal this way, not vertical this way when you're playing your forehand. Um, but let me skip to the third game here. And again, only because I want to find... I, I'd rather see you playing well. Because mistakes that you make when you're playing poorly are mistakes you can probably fix on your own. Mistakes you make when you're playing well are mistakes that you're always going to make until somebody helps you fix them. There it goes. This is game three. Okay. Um, backhand technique needs some work for sure. You almost... Like this... This is really bad. This is really bad. And this is really bad. As well. Um, however... I got to 2000... Without a backhand. And... I would have won this point when I was learning by looping the ball that came to my forehand. I would have won the point right here. This ball is the perfect opportunity to loop your forehand. Um, yes, it's a little bit wider. You're going to have to move, but this ball has to be hit. And then you don't have to worry about playing the crazy good backhand, um, which miraculously lands, but we, we don't want to be winning points that way. Better. I'd rather you miss like that than play a weak push. Yeah, too passive. You, you know, too. I can tell that you know. I can tell that you know where he's returning after you do this serve. Because I can see that you're ready for it. It's like, you're ready, you're ready. And then at the last second, you just block. And you could have just put the point away right here instead of getting into this rally. Um... And it's so hard in a tournament, because um, I know there's pressure, your, your points are on the line, you're trying to improve, but... Yeah, it's just, it's just not good. But I'm curious if you win this game from your shots, or if you win it because of his mistakes. Because there's a big difference between the two. And right now, it looks like you're playing the same way. Yeah, so you like that's that's a similar point to what happened in the first game, and you just happened to win the 50-50 when the rally came. Ah, uh, yeah, it's the same. You're just relying on his mistakes. Yeah, not good, not good. If it, see the the problem with that point is you won the point from his mistake. I'm not missing that ball. Even an 1800 is not missing that ball. Most 1400s aren't missing that ball. It's just he happened to make a mistake and you won the point. You don't and, and you don't want to you don't want to win a point and be like, oh god, I I almost lost that point. When, when you make a mistake, it should feel like if you had landed the shot, you would have won the point. And right now, it feels like he feels like that. You you don't necessarily feel like that. Not bad. That was actually a very good return as well, right into the middle. Yeah, there's a lot of good. I'm, I'm, I'm being particularly harsh because 2000, you have to understand, 2000 is really, really good. If you're a 1200 playing like this and you're like, my goal is to be USATT 1700, I'd be praising you. I'd be saying, good job. You're keeping the ball on the table. You're doing everything you need to do to get to 1700. But if you want to get to 2,000, you have to understand that 2,000 is really, really freaking good for someone that's not a professional player. For an amateur, 2,000 is really, really strong. So you can't afford to make these tiny micro errors throughout the point, like pushing for just a little bit too long, um, just slight mistakes that add up. And so we got, we got to fix these problems. Yeah, it's, 
pattern recognition. And you, mentally, it, it, it's it's so hard because mentally you're being rewarded for the way you're playing. So you're getting this positive feedback loop of I block when it comes to my forehand, I go back and lob, and then he kills it. But then you play against a stronger player and you're conditioned into playing this way, it's just not going to work. Yeah, same thing on the forehand there, by the way. Look at your wrist. This is really, really bad. It should be, if this is your handle, the paddle should be like this. Never like this on the forehand. This, so basically the idea behind it is if your paddle is like this, let me get rid of some of the drawings. If your paddle is like this, you have to basically push the paddle forwards with your arm. And so there's no body behind the shot. If your paddle is like this, then you can basically use your arm as a pivot point and actually rotate it along with your whole body, which gives you more spin and more power. Um, so you can almost see it with your elbow. Here your elbow is set to go from bent to straight. Like, you make contact with the ball, your elbow is bent, you push your elbow forwards, and by the time you finish your shot, your arm is probably straight a lot of the time. Ideally, the distance between your elbow and your body should be the same every single shot on your forehand. There should be no movement between your elbow and your body. And it just serves as a pivot point for the rotation on the shot, not a pivot point to push forwards and extend your arm. The arm should already be extended, and that length should be the same throughout the whole shot. Um, but let's go ahead and keep going. You can see it there. You didn't even fully extend, but it's really obvious. Your arm pushes forwards a little bit. And he actually does a better job of it than you do. So, like, watch the forehand. You see how his whole arm rotates this way instead of pushing forwards? That's, that's the idea you want on the forehand. And you do it on the loop. Like, the loop there is good. Um, you can see you start. I'll put it in slow motion. And you rotate. Up and the distance between your elbow and your body, it's not perfect, but it's for the most part the same the whole shot compared to some of the shots against topspin where you're where you're just pushing forwards. Yeah, a lot of blocking on the forehand. No. Can't surf like that. Um again, that's one of those things. You can get away with it at the rating you're at right now. People won't know what to do. Any good player gets that surf, they're just gonna kill it. Um so we, we have to get rid of that. Uh, okay. it's another micro thing. Like it's, it's so, you're, you're so close to being there. Um, every time you do this serve right here, the long, fast top spin, you're ready to play your forehand and he always without fail plays it right to the middle of the table somewhere in this spot. He never, ever plays it wide here. He almost never plays it here. So after the serve, why don't you take half a step to your left? this way and just set up for your forehand to rip it. it it's a pattern recognition thing you just have to really recognize early like from the first game you should have recognized where his um return was going and be setting up for it yeah you're not ready that's not a technique issue that's uh you weren't expecting him to return their issue and then again you're just too comfortable lobbing because it's working Yeah, these serves need a lot of work. Ah, same. Look. The block on the forehand. You can block when it, like, even up to 2,000. You can be a predominantly, like, blocky player when the ball gets looped to your back end, where you can block and punch. But these weaker shots, I think you just have to go for it. You, you need to try and loop it. Yeah, and it's like you, you have two modes. You have you have mode one where it's like um, you're at 0%, you push, you block, you lob, and it's very, very safe. And then you have mode two 
where excuse my dog in the back and where you're at like 700 percent and it's just you're seeing red and it's kill everything and we need we need mode 1.5 where it's 80 percent when you loop it's controlled aggression when you block it's just on the back end and you're still going for it on the forehand we, we need kind of like an in-between instead of these two extremes but it looks like I'll, I'll keep watching i'll give you the benefit of the doubt but it looks like you win this because of his mistakes not because of your good play you're so close it's i can tell you want to hit it but you don't and we need to figure out why is it because you're nervous to miss is it because it's a tournament but i can see it you you know that the serve is topspin and you know what the right shot is like you're there you're ready to hit it and then you're like wait actually nope i'm gonna lob it and just play it safe and we need to fix this this does not work against good players it works against players that let you lob but that ball is like a perfect example of one that you can just slap and, and win the point. But you're so scared. You're so scared to miss. Yeah. This is not good. It looks flashy. And like I said, f for the viewers at home, this is not beginner level table tennis. A 1500 rating, 1800 league rating is pretty strong. That's a pretty high level better than most players and this is all you need to get to that point but if you're trying to take that extra next step and get to 2000 oh. you can't play like this it just doesn't work yeah he is taking all the initiative right now like the whole game is in his hands if if he wins, it's because he played well. If he loses, it's because he played badly. And you're kind of just... Nice. You're almost just a spectator to your own game. Like if anything, if I was um, this player's coach, I'd be praising him for going for the shots and being willing to lose the match going for the shots. And you can actually see it right there. I just want to point it out. Very similar pattern to what you do on your own surf. He does it with the backhand, but it's the same spin. And it's so important that you notice this. Quick topspin surf to your back end. Catches you by surprise. You kind of play it to the middle. And he's ready to hit it. He misses, but he goes for the shot instead of going for the block. And that's what we need to have you start doing. And just as a common courtesy, I like to point it out. Once you get higher level... Um, Make sure you're watching, you're, you're not paying attention, make sure you're watching your opponent just to make sure that they're ready before you serve as a common courtesy because people will start to get upset if you serve really quickly and they're not 100% ready and it creates this awkward situation where like you, you just want to make sure you do them the courtesy of waiting and making sure they're ready before you serve. I can't believe you win this. Uh, it's so passive, even the loop. Okay, was that the game? Wow. Alright, so... These are going to be pretty tough notes. So I'm going to give you a strike system. Strike system. Three strikes, and I close your next pod. You can push a maximum one one ball per rally you must attempt a loop on the second push or long underspin ball that comes to you so does that make sense so they push one ball deep to your backhand and you just push fine they push the second ball long you have to loop it doesn't apply to short balls but if i catch you pushing two balls in a rally that's a strike if you get three strikes in your next submission i close the vod and i tell you that you have to run it back and fix it um and keep working on it until the next time so that's your first note second 
need to work on surfs. So, um, you said you play about an hour on the robot and then one to two hours of playing people. I actually think that you should cut... Don't, don't sacrifice your practice time for this. Just add to it. So maybe... 20, 20 minutes is all you need. Minutes per day when you're able to play. Should be 100% dedicated to working on your serves. They should be so good that you win 80% of the points when you're serving. Not necessarily you win the point outright on the serve, but so good that when they return it, it's a weak return. Like, like when you have the ball in your hand, you should be like, yes. Uh, like, like it, if you're down 8-10 and you have the ball in your hand, it should be 10-10. Like, you should be winning a large, large, large majority of your serves until you get to like 24, 2500. Um, your serve is everything. And right now you have, I can tell that you have not really practiced it. You have some basic serves that have got you to the point you're at. We need to refine them. You need a serve that sets up your bread and butter. Um, you need a lot of spin. When you take away the spin, it needs to be deceptive. We need to get rid of the, like, the crazy leg kick that you were doing. Um, we, just, we just need to refine it a little bit. Um, I actually had one more note I needed to add that I was noticed I forgot to put in here while I was reviewing. Um, so this is also going to be a strike system. Um, three strikes, and I close your next VOD and um, won't review it. So, when you're serving, you need to hold the ball flat in your hand and wait at least two full seconds before you toss the ball. So, in other words, if, if I watch your match and you grab the ball and you serve it, that's a strike. You need to stop, hold the ball flat in your hand, and wait two seconds just to think about what you're going to do before you serve. Because if you just toss the ball willy-nilly and serve, every return they could give you is going to surprise you. Um, I meant to put this in while I was doing the notes originally, but I caught it um, while I was editing. So I'm adding it now. Um, yeah. That's all that I'm going to tell you for now. I'll let you figure out how to get your loops better. Because the, I, I think you know how to loop. And if you looped in practice, it would look a lot different than the way you looped in games. But um, yeah, we need, to, we need to actually go for the shots the correct way. Um, and when you first try to do this, you're probably going to have garbage loops. They're going to be really slow, lobby, horrible, badly placed um, loops. Um, but then as you keep doing it in matches, they're going to get better and better. And then you'll suddenly have a moment where it clicks and you'll be like, holy crap, I can, I can loop now and I'm not scared to loop. Um, let's fix this first. There's a lot of issues. But it's really, really hard to focus on more than one thing at a time. And it's actually impossible to improve that way. You have to just focus on a couple things, make these things good, and then move on to next stuff. Because, of course, you're not playing full time. So the um, amount of time you have to play is um, limited. So here's your notes for now. I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you all so much for watching. If y'all enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Drop your comments down below if you have questions. And again, um, if you have a VOD you'd like me to review, then join the Discord server, watch the instructions, follow all the rules. Um, I want to help everyone get to as good as possible. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, bye.